In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. I never thought I would come to the day when I would hear one of my bishops quote South Park, uh, let alone talk about the famous underwear gnomes of that show. If you're not familiar, uh, sat, uh, South Park is a satire show. It takes place in Colorado. It's anime. It's a bunch of foul-mouthed kids who have all kinds of adventures. And on one of their adventures, they discovered that their underwear was being stolen. And one of the kids was convinced it was the underwear gnomes that was stealing the gnomes, uh, stealing their underwear. So eventually they followed one of these gnomes back to their lair, and they discovered that, in fact, there was this whole subterranean world of gnomes, like little garden gnomes. They were stealing children's underwear. And they asked them, why are you doing this? And they brought up their business plan chart. It's a business plan, and it was a chart. And step one was steal underwear. And step three was make profits. <laughs> there was no step two. <laughs> And they said, so the boys said, well, how are you going to make money off the underwear? And the underwear gnomes said, well, we just make money. It's step one, we steal underwear. Step three, we make profit. So Bishop, you brought this story up in a meeting of the advisory board of this parish, which is kind of a representative group of parishioners and, and those who are interested in, in the leadership of the parish. And we were talking about the plans that we have for this place, Messiah Commons, Messiah Media, Messiah Market, and presenting these to the bishop. And his concern, I think, in telling the story was to suggest that while we had a, a compelling vision for the future, and we had a pretty good sense of perhaps where we're at, his question was, do we really have a process for moving forward? What's in the middle there between step one and step three? Maybe we had collected our underwear, but how are we going to make our profits? Step forward a little bit. This uh, week, we have something called the Vital Church Planting Conference coming up. This is a conference that is uh, co-hosted by the Diocese of Toronto and uh, Wycliffe Seminary. And uh, it's been going on for about nine years now. This will be the seventh time that I've attended this conference. I've gone every year. It's hosted down at St. Paul's Bloor Street. And it draws people from all over the country, as well as from the US and even the UK, come to this conference to be with people who are working on issues related to how we make the gospel relevant to our current age. Specifically, how do we create new communities of faith to exist alongside already existing communities of faith, such as this Sunday morning gathering. So I've gone for about seven years. And this is the first year that I'm bringing a team with me. And uh, we're bringing, um, let's see, there's uh, seven of us going on this uh, uh, conference. So uh, one of the conference organizers is doing a workshop specifically on church in the third space. That is, church in spaces that are like what we're talking about creating with Messiah Commons. Uh, he got in touch with me over Facebook, and he said... Uh, you know, what are you up to? What are you planning? And I shared with him the, the Prezi that I created, which summarizes the project. And he wrote back to me, and he, he said, wow, he said, that's really sexy. And I wrote back, and I said, you mean like librarian sexy? And he said, exactly. And I've been thinking about that, in, and actually, uh, you know, to suggest that it's sort of librarian sexy kind of adds this academic dimension to it, as though it was the smartness of the plan. But I don't think that's quite right. I think it's more like Beyonce sexy. And what I mean by that is it has this baseline. You know, it has this kind of solid thump to it when these ideas land. When you listen to Beyonce's music, you really need to have a subwoofer going, and you need to kind of turn that bass up, because it's all about that bass, boom, 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 that you feel kind of thudding in your chest. That's what her music is about. That's what draws you in. And I think it's similar with the concepts that we're working on here at the church, that it's really about that underlying layer, that that superficial stuff of, of you know, some of the ideas and so on really aren't nearly as important as something more fundamental that's shifting that we're, that we're about here. And I began to get a glimpse of what that might look like on Thursday when we had our normal planning meeting. And it was, it was very well attended. We had uh, nine of us gathered here on Thursday morning, including uh, John Hill and Charles and Megan Bull, who's up with the kids right now. And then a bunch of people that you may or may not know, like uh, Kirk Vanderzandy, Jonathan Spencer, Stephen Rowe, who attends sometimes on, when he's in town, and all these folks. And we were gathered, as we usually are, to talk through the ideas and to plan and to work together. And we had a special guest who was an architect who uh, lives in the neighborhood and very, very, very much wants to work with the church on the revitalization of the space. And he's a very senior architect. He works uh, on the faculty at the University of Toronto. And he's at a place in his career where he no longer has to take jobs unless they actually interest him. Uh, he's very interested in problems about space and community and about how community uh, interacts with space. He's also very interested, interestingly, in acoustics and around how uh, spaces can be playable in a way and can, you can make music out of a space and, and so on. So we met with him and one of the things that he told us is that I could tell he was a little surprised by how many people we had gathered on a Thursday morning. And it was evident to him that we had a real passion in our community 
for this transformation work that we have undertaken. And I realized that indeed it is extraordinary to have nine people gathered on a Thursday morning on a work day to talk about the revitalization of a church and to do that not just that Thursday, this past Thursday, but every week for months. We've been working on this for months. And that's what I mean by that kind of base, that, that kind of underlying work that's been done again and again, boom, 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 the beat of this missional movement. And that made me think, you know, what was it that was working here? And I decided that what it was, was it was relationship. That this particular team of people have come together because they have relationships with each other, with me, with this parish, but even more fundamentally, a relationship with God. And that they really strongly are passionate about making the church relevant to the community that we are in now. So, fast forward to the story that we have in the, the gospel today of Jesus calling people into relationship with him, calling them into ministry with him. Notice, okay, that the people that he chose for his missional endeavor here were not necessarily the, the smartest people in town. They were not the people who were the rabbis teaching in the synagogue. They were not the people who had particular expertise in demographics or anything else. They were workmen. They were men that were working at fishing. It's just a very uh, ordinary kind of vocation in the ancient world as it is now. And they were ordinary men. And he called them into something extraordinary. And they were not ready. In fact, they were in no way prepared for the work that they had undertaken. And why did they go with him anyway? A lot of uh, biblical commentators suggest that, that the Matthew's Gospel is trying to tell us that Jesus had settled in this region for a while, and, and so he actually knew these men probably. He had already developed a relationship with them. So when that moment comes when he says, let's go, it's time to march, follow me, they simply drop everything and they do it. Perhaps they've been waiting for that moment when he would ask for their commitment. So ordinary men doing ordinary things but called into something extraordinary by virtue of the relationship that they have with Jesus. So it was there, so it is here, that ordinary people gather together to accomplish something extraordinary based on relationship, both horizontally with each other and vertically with our Lord. So go back to the, the underwear gnomes. I would suggest that step two in turning underwear into money has something to do with relationship. It has something to do with uh, being drawn into being with each other in community. I think one of the things that struck uh, Bishop Yu as a bit surprising is, you know, he, he asked the advisory board, he said, so have, have any of you actually heard these ideas before that Tay is sharing? And they all kind of looked at each other and they said, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, think, I think Bishop Yu suspected that this was just some kind of brilliant fever dream that I had had and that I was just sharing it with him for the first time, although I've actually spoken to him about it before, and that this would be news to people. And I'm like, no, this isn't news to people. There's a community of people here who are working very hard through their relationships to create something new and beautiful. And each time we draw someone else into that group, like uh, recently we had a meeting with a local business owner who runs some, some coffee shops, and we're hoping to enter into a relationship with him. And I think, you know, it was interesting to hear him kind of like interact with our community and be a bit surprised by just how much work we've done to date on uh, understanding and listening to what's going on, what is the beat of this neighborhood, and how do we engage with it. So those are my thoughts going into uh, the week with Vital Church Planting Conference in which a team of people from this parish, representing this parish, about seven people, is going to go and listen to these ideas presented by church leaders from around the world. And, uh, and I think it has to do with relationship, and I think it has to do with, with, with that quality of relationship which draws us together, which enables mission and, and reaching out to the world in love. So now I'll open this up as I normally do and see if anybody has anything they'd like to share.